Good afternoon YouTube, this is Real Life Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a DIY. I know a lot of us right now are in isolation and we are kind of going stir crazy and maybe the kids are at home. This is something you could get your wife or your husband or your kids involved with. It could be a very family friendly project. We're going to build a bath table. Now I'm going to put a little different spin on it. This particular bath table is actually a river table. River tables are getting kind of popular these days. There's a ton of bath tables out there. It's just this one is a river bath table. So let's get into the build. So I started off very easily with a piece of 1x12 pine and I cut it down. The first thing I had to do when I, once I got my piece of pine was measure the bathtub and how wide it needs to be and how long I want to cut my board. In this case, I also want a little board that droops over to the side. It helps stop it from falling into the tub for any reason. There's going to be a little bitty skirt leg underneath to keep it from backing out over the other side. I always write everything down. I, I have this project board out in my shop and I write everything down that I'm going to do I kind of draw out that way if I get ahead of myself I can go back to the thinking table and I always use dry erase because my project only changes a billion times as I'm working on these DIY projects and I used to go through like a whole entire notebook per project but I found it's a lot cheaper just to get a set of markers every month now this project is going to be in contact with a lot of moisture from the bathtub and it may actually get wet from time to time so I did use tight bond 3 and I used a couple of screws in which I back out after I feel like it's dried enough. I measured out how far it needs to be from the side. I put that skirt leg on and basically what that does is that keeps it from moving back and forth. I got it down to about a quarter of an inch. I didn't want it to be so tight that you have to press it down into place every time. I do want it to move back and forth a little bit so I left about a quarter inch gap. So after I did that I measured where I wanted my little tea lights to be and I used a Forstner bit and just ripped out an area deep enough to where my tea lights will sit down in there. Now I did come back with epoxy and fill those in. I realized that if the tea light got all the way down in there then it may be hard to remove since tea lights have a really short lifespan. At this house we generally drink coffee around the clock. I didn't want to set a hot cup of coffee directly on wood but you can set it directly on epoxy all day long. So after I got that cut out, then I was like, man, uh, I really like what's going on here. So I put a round over bit on and started going around the outside edge of it. It started looking really good. Then I had this idea, you know what, let's draw a river. So I drew a river and uh, I used a router and cut it out as well. This is something you can do. Now this isn't going to be an epoxy or how to epoxy or how to stain video. Those will be completely different. If you want to see that, drop them down in the comment and let me know and I'll make a couple of videos like that. This is just how to build the table. So once I had the first layer of epoxy poured, I waited, came back the next day, I stained everything. Once I stained everything, then I came back and poured another layer of epoxy on there. But I realized something at the end, uh, it was real critical to me. After I poured my first layer of final epoxy on there, I realized, hey, you're, you're missing the stand. The stand is for you to sit like a phone or a tablet or something like that. So I did go back with some other pieces of lumber I had laying around and I basically cut a couple of 45s, used some hot glue, put the hot glue on there. I stained them down real good. and. Um, poured my final layer of epoxy on top of that and it certainly sealed them forever. If you don't want to pour epoxy, you just want to stain and seal, then this project may take you an hour. And you're looking at like 20 bucks, $25, and it's something that you can do inside while you're secluded from the rest of the world. So I hope this video helped you in some kind of way. If you like epoxy projects and you want to see how to epoxy, drop that down in the comments section and I'll put a couple of two of those videos together. If you have questions on how to stain or seal something like that, drop those in the comments section as well. I certainly appreciate you stopping by and if you like things like real life reviews, DIYs, cooks, things of that nature, then you're certainly in the right place. Everyone be well and until next week, this is Real Life Reviews.